Ah, uh, the internet. An easy way to learn anything you want to learn in the world, but also an easy way to learn the wrong information. With pages up like Wikipedia and tween pop articles written by non-credible journalists with little obligation to be accurate with their information, we have become to slowly believe things in history that are simply not true. In this video, we will be talking about things in history you were lied about and believe. From bullet bras to 17th century twerking, let's talk all about it and get the fun facts straight. Number 1. The misconception that women were proper. Oh, this is a big one. People often have the picture-perfect image that women of the past were absolutely modest and proper to the fullest extent. That dancing always looked like this, clean and respectful, but that couldn't be furthest from the truth. <laughs> Humans, in fact, have hardly changed. <laughs> Ever heard of molding the cockle bread? If you're giggling that it sounds inappropriate, oh it is. Molding the cockle bread is a 17th century dance move where women would use their buttocks to stimulate sexual activity on the dance floor. Yeah, they invented twerking. Respect your elders. A quote by John Aubrey, the young wenches were indulging in a wanton sport called molding of the cockle bread. They would get up on the table board and as they gather up their knees and their coats with their hands as high as they can, they wobble to and fro with their buttocks and as if they were kneading of dough with their asses. Now pretty girls in large fluffy dresses twerking does sound rather steamy, though you realize the odd song they would sing at the same time. My day is sick and gone to bed, and I'll go mold my cockle bread. Up with heels and down with my head, this is the way to mold cockle bread. Yikes. Sorry, 17th century, totally not hot. Number two, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe has become a hot topic with the release of the upcoming film Blonde, which has simultaneously made her a target for inaccurate information once again. One being, Marilyn Monroe is Latina, so this rumor has become a widespread belief recently due to a few articles circling around the internet highlighting that she is actually a Mexican woman who had to hide her identity in Hollywood. No, 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 no. No! While this is a true story for other 1950s stars like Carol Channing, who lived her life as a white woman, despite actually being African American, or John Gavin, who changed his name from John Pablo's to hide his Mexican ancestry, or the famous Margarita Carmen Cancino, which is actually Rita Hayworth, Marilyn Monroe was not on that list of hidden ethnic stars. Now this rumor about her background grew from the discovery that she was said to grow up in Mexico and that her mother, Gladys Pearl Baker, was born in Mexico herself. While this is true, Gladys Pearl Baker's parents moved to Mexico for work from America since her father was a painter and just gave birth to her there. And Marilyn Monroe only lived in Mexico as a toddler for a few years as Gladys also moved back to Mexico again for brief work. Marilyn was actually born in Los Angeles, California, and her family is actually of Scottish and American descent. As a Latina myself, I would have adored to find out that one of my favorite stars was like me, but in actuality, Marilyn Monroe and her family are genetically Scottish American and were only in Mexico for work. This didn't stop Miss Monroe though from appreciating the Mexican culture and she even went back to visit many times throughout her life. Number 3. Bullet Bras Let's stop calling it that. Why? Because they were never called bullet bras and they never actually look like this. What you're looking at is actually one of the thousand photoshopped images of the bra style called uplift bras and they actually looked like this. It wasn't until the 80s when Madonna featured her famous cone bra outfit that was actually a parody of the uplift bra and because her cones look like the tips of bullets, the term bullet bra just stuck and so did the belief that bullet bras were a part of 1950s history. If you actually go back and reference any vintage article, you'll never see the article reference the bra as a bullet bra. Number 4. Betty Boop now this one got a pretty heavy hand of misinformation that spread like wildfire and has practically altered itself into common knowledge, but let's unweave the web. So Betty Boop has been rumored to have been exposed as an African American character that was later redrawn to be whitewashed and this rumor was created by BlackHistory.com and PBS soon following. Photos like this were used as an example and proof. 
Yes, a photo of a tan Betty Boop in Hawaiian attire on vacation became the proof of her being originally a black character, as well as fake images of the talented Esther Jones were used to say that she was the only inspiration of Betty, despite her actually being a 12-year-old when Betty Boop premiered. Now, this story was stretched pretty far, but not too far from the truth, and it's pretty messy. Max Fletcher Studios had something to say about this misinformation and gave us the facts of Betty's origins on their website, which I later fact-checked and saw that their origin story does align pretty well with what the original creator said in court hearings, so here is the real origin story of Betty Boop. Betty Boop started off as a cartoon dog in an episode called Dizzy Dishes. She, in fact, wasn't a main character, but a side character in a love interest for Bimbo the dog. I know, she looks horrifying, and this is why later they changed her design drafting up an image that was meant to represent more the women of the flapper era, making her dog ears into hoop earrings. Short curly hair, tight dresses, and dark makeup was a fashion staple across the globe for the 20s, and Max Flesher wanted to style Betty in this popular fashion. Now, Max Fletcher and the studio has confirmed that they used multiple girls to draw up Betty, including the famous Clara Bow and Mae Questel, who became the real-life face and voice of Betty Boop. The voice, mannerisms, and the catchphrase Boop Boop Be Doop actually belonged to the African-American jazz club singer Esther Jones. Now, this is where the web gets really messy. Helen Kane was a famous actress and singer of the exact same time known for the same voice and catchphrase. Now, I know the studio wants to deny this part of Betty's origin for legal reasons, but I personally think it's far too obvious that Helen wasn't entirely crazy and that Betty was heavily inspired by her performances and mannerisms. I only say this because Betty was literally singing the exact same songs as Helen Kane and wearing the exact same outfits as her, sometimes appearing on a Betty episode only months after Helen would debut a particular performance in a particular outfit. I've been a bad girl all my life. I pick my teeth with a carving knife and I make a widow of a wife for some dangerous man will grow. I'm dangerous Nan McGrew. Pipe down or I'll fill you with lead. I'm harder than nails and lucky as hell when I shoot at the body and dead. Ain't you kind of glad and ain't you kind of gay when you hear me say I love you or tell me, baby, or ain't you? Boop, boop, be doop. And don't you kind of miss a little bit of bliss? When a hug or kiss I give you, tell me, baby. So as much denial surrounds the origin of Betty Boop being tied to Helen Kane, those two examples out of many more examples I can provide make it fairly obvious that Betty Boop may in fact be a caricature of Helen Kane. And it was so obvious in fact that Helen Kane sued Max Fletcher Studios for the caricature. Now Max Fletcher wasn't going to give up Betty Boop that easily because Betty Boop became such a sensation that she was worth more than Helen Kane herself. So what did he have to do to get out of this lawsuit and win it? he had to find at least one other person who had a similar performance to Helen Kane. And he dug so deep that he actually managed to expose Helen Kane for stealing her own performances from a very talented little girl, Esther Jones. Upon investigation for the case, Max Fletcher's team was able to uncover that Helen did in fact attend a performance at the jazz club, a performance by Esther Jones an African-American local child star. Makes sense, right? Betty Boop was extremely childlike. So was Helen Kane, but so was Esther Jones, a literal 12-year-old. Mind-blowing, I know. Suddenly after that attendance, did she begin booping on television. It was incredibly obvious that Helen stole her voice and catchphrase and mannerisms, and she thought no one would find out. Max Fletcher did approach Esther personally during the court situation and asked her to testify that she is the original booper, but she denied getting involved and did not appear in court, which is understandable considering she was now only 14 years old when the lawsuit was being had. Max was still able to provide evidence that Helen's gig was stolen and won the courts over against her. So this origin story of Betty was more of an artist taking from an artist taking from an artist. Hey, that's Hollywood for ya. 
So in conclusion, Betty Boop is actually a concoction and has been inspired by multiple, multiple talented women of different backgrounds and of different talents to create this iconic character that we love and know today. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about famous misconceptions of history, be sure to subscribe and follow so I know you want more, and I will see you guys in my next video.